1962 report to the government of South Australia used Los Angeles and its roads as a possible model to consider and they looked at and took the study of 101, the highway between Los Angeles and San Fernando Valley. This is the picture in the maths plan of 1962 and this is what it looks like today. What's missing from this study is a bit further down at the end of the freeway they're not traffic lights there's a whole series of flyovers and fly-unders if we switch on the roads we can see here the system and we'll see that lots of important structures are very close to this intersection so just here is the Hollywood Bowl Music Centre and here is the 101 freeway and if we go down to ground level that's the entrance to the Los Angeles Hollywood Bowl and here are some of the crossovers and freeways. It suggested that a similar thing needs to be done at the South Eastern Freeway at Glen Osman in South Australia. In, in 1962, the Mats report made this promise. Freeways can carry 1,500 vehicles per hour in each traffic lane safely and without congestion. As long as they don't come to some traffic lights and then have to spend two or three minutes waiting for the traffic lights to go green. In 1962 they're making these suggestions that the bright red line is to be done in 1961 to 71 and dotted lines 971 to 81 and in that same image they're saying that this southeast freeway from Crafers to Bridgewater should be built and in fact three years after this in 965 they started to build this f this freeway but it started here and the road from there to this to the city suburbs was not to be improved in this program of works. In fact, suggesting with the dash line that they're going to enhance this road to Bedford Park as the way to get down from Crafers down into the city. We can see that the uh, double over there on the The slip lane is on as a trap line. And the slip lane is two lanes. The crossroads is two lanes. And two plus two equals four. So there's only three lanes to receive all the vehicles. And the truck has to stop on a rising slope. Is a 
vehicles turning left of Lenoxman Road. One plus two for the three, but in fact only two lanes on the road. We see all the vehicles. unique system, a bus lane, where the bus is going to turn right into a zone private slip lane for buses. Just trying to do a right hand turn here into crossroads. There are five lanes of vehicles on crossroads, and we still have this bus in the slip lane. schedules cannot be very precise because there might be delays at the intersection and unfortunately there might be accidents as well. The speed double is now going to stop and wait and take off on a rising slope. Friday afternoon.
see the truck has to actually come out into the second lane to get around the corner. side of the road is a slip lane which goes from the northern suburbs up into the Adelaide Hills. To get onto the freeway, which is three lanes, there's two lanes coming from crossroads and two lanes coming from the northern suburbs. Now there's one lane short and the slip lane, believe it or not, has got trap lights on it. So it kind of suggests that the intersection here on all on the level is trying to do too much. What would be better would be to actually have grade separation between all these different levels of traffic so that the number of lanes isn't suddenly changing and you need to have traffic lights and have all these heavy trucks suddenly coming down the hills and stopping. This is the South Australian Government Department for Infrastructure and Transport showing the vehicles that could be travelling on South Australian roads. If we go to the National Government website, we'll see here the National Key Routes. The only problem is that then it talks about crossroads as we'll see, there's a whole series of reasons why that isn't used because of the time delays at the rail line and the fact that here at Crossroads South Road there's a major problem with the rail line and flyovers and other reasons why big trucks don't use this route. So the only real route from the South Eastern Freeway is this way, north. And if we look across this with the population density, we see this major route is travelling through some of the most densely populated parts of Adelaide. If we go then to the RavNet site, which is the South Australian government's site showing where you can take big trucks. Here we've got where the 23 metre B doubles can travel, Cross Roads, Glen Osmond Road, and Port Rush Road. The 26 can take the same route. The 30 metre road trains can't travel anywhere there, and we'll see that the road trains can only come into Adelaide from the north. The 36 metre road trains are even more restricted where they can travel around the port and the 53 metre ones don't come into Adelaide at all. This is the road train converter dolly system. The road train that dollies can come and go along Portrush Road and down Greenhill Road. 
to get onto Bar Richmond Road onto South Road. Vehicle carrying vehicles, there's a warning here for those. They can't travel on Mount Barker Road, the exit if if they exceed 2.5 meters in width or 4.6 meters in height and the 25 meter vehicles can travel only on Port Rush Road and finally look at the rigid truck and dog 23 meters can travel on these roads now let's look at let's look at the number of vehicles that actually are using our roads in Adelaide and South Australia. And this is the South Australian government's road usage map. And if we go to crossroads, we'll see that the number of vehicles that use the road in a day is 32,400 and 4% of those vehicles are commercial vehicles. A total of 1,300 vehicles a day used crossroads. The South Eastern Freeway had 49,700 vehicles using it on average. So this is an average across a whole week and it isn't the number of vehicles travelling on so on a Friday, a busy day, or a Monday, another busy day. Eleven percent of the vehicles on the South South Eastern Freeway are commercial vehicles. A total of five hundred and fifty commercial vehicles. Look at Van Osman Road. The number of vehicles was 27,400 per day on average, where 4.5 percent are commercial vehicles, and we're in total of 1,200. And finally, Port Rush Road, 36,900 with 7% commercial vehicles or 2,600. So as we've seen previously, this is actually our one and only way to get freight from the eastern suburbs, so the eastern states, Melbourne and Sydney into Adelaide by road. We now have a closer look at this intersection. First of all, let's look at pedestrians. Strangely, for such a busy intersection as pedestrians, are uh, brought very close to the action. So to get it from the petrol station which is built here, the pedestrians cross over and interfere with the traffic coming off Port Rush Road wanting to turn up into the Adelaide Hills. There are two lanes on Port Rush Road and three on the freeway and because of the sharp angle with these very large trucks we can see that the line on the road indicates that the inner or left hand side track would be expected to come out and go on to the middle track of the freeway and not try and come in close because of the laziness of the trailer on the big doubles it would cut across the corner and potentially any pedestrians staying there are in danger of being killed as has happened in other places in Adelaide where B doubles are made to go around sharp corners. The pedestrians can't get across to the other side of the fr other side of the freeway at this point they'd have to go this other direction, crossing over four lanes of traffic and then another 
three lanes, so that's seven lanes of traffic to get to the fountain, which was where we started our filming. And then across here, you get across five lanes of traffic, then three lanes of traffic, and then one lane of traffic. Interestingly, from the freeway down on the crossroads, there's only one lane going in three lanes. Here, from crossroads, there are three lanes going up to the Adelaide Hills on the freeway. And so what we've got here is a conflict between the leftmost of those lanes. Actually, if any truck is a bit slow in getting across here, reaching to the back of it. So there's, at this point, the number of lanes here possibly should have separation of the crossroad traffic and the Glen Osmond Road traffic from the Port Rush Road traffic going up in the hills. Adelaide has a great dislike of using grade separation in motor vehicles. In fact, it's the se separation of trains and vehicles. We like level crossings in Adelaide. We like intersections where everything's on the level. And the only problem is with doing that is things spread out sideways, get wider and wider. And the nature of the area is destroyed, as we saw on the north-south road in Croydon, where the freeway spread out sideways. And, and now we've got the same thing happening at the mouths of the tunnels which are being built on the South Road at Feverton. At the end of the freeway, they're not traffic lights, there's a whole series of flyovers and fly-unders. If we switch on the roads, we can see here the system 